Welcome back. This is the Tutor Wizard. I'm Adrian. Please subscribe right here and hit the notification bell. You'll get notifications for this series and many other ones on our channel. Today what we're doing is multivariable calculus series. We're in chapter 1, partial derivatives, section 1.3, which is also partial derivatives, and Pete Peters, New York, New York. I don't know why. This lecture we're going to do specifically higher partial derivatives and something called Clairaut's theorem for functions of two variables. In the next video, we'll do the same thing where we do higher derivatives of functions of more than one or more than two variables. Let's do that. For the quick rundown, higher derivatives, basically what we're saying is just like when we do higher derivatives for functions of one variable, when I take the derivative as a function of that function, the result is also a function of x, so I could take its derivative. Now we have a function of two variables. But when I take the partials, those things that we create, look at the previous video, all of those partial derivatives are also functions of x and y as well. Therefore, we could talk about, if we just talk about this guy now as a function on his own right, I could talk about his partial derivative with respect to x and y. These two guys, in Newton's notation, or in Leibniz's notation, these two guys, we're not going to write it like this, we'll cleverly write it in a little bit better notation in a second, but this is what really what we mean. We have this function fx, and then we're going to take its partial derivative with respect to x, and its partial derivative with respect to y, and then we have a function f of fy, the partial derivative of f with respect to y, he's a function now of two variables, so we take his partial with respect to x and y. And this is the same story in Leibniz notation. The way that we're really going to write that before we do some examples is we'll write it like this. For higher derivatives, we have, let's do first a function of two variables. Then let's talk about second order higher derivatives. Again, we can keep going in this game. In the next video, we'll do derivatives of higher than second order, third order. So when we take fx, x, x, fx, that one's the special one, f, x, 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 and then f, y, y, y. That's the one you always big y, y, y. But we can keep going with this. For now, let's just do two of them. So we call this second order derivatives. There's going to be four of them. We can have f, x, x, f, x, y, f, y, x, f, y, y. In this one, it's a little bit harder at first when you do this, especially these ones. It won't matter in a second. You'll see that the Clairaut's theorem. But at first, when you do this, what this is saying is you put the brackets back if you get confused at first. But this is the closest one to f is the one that gets done first. So this is you take the derivative of f with respect to x first, then y. This one is you take the derivative of y first, then x. In Leibniz notation, these are also called mixed partial derivatives, the ones that have both the x and y. So in there, in Leibniz notation, you can say we're going to take two derivatives, but these ones are purely just x's both times, and this is purely y both times. In the mixed partial derivatives, we have, this is saying now, x was first, and then y. And this one is saying y was first, and then x. Spend some time with this, you'll get used to the notation. But these are Newton's notation and Leibniz notation for second order partial derivatives. There's four of them. There's three. By Clairaut's theorem. Let's do an example. Example one, find the second partial derivatives of this function f of xy, which is x cos y plus y e to the x. The first thing we need also when we want to find these second partial derivatives in our explanation, what we're doing is taking the partial derivatives of, of the first partial derivatives, which are also functions of x and y. What? We need the fx and fy first. fx is equal to, but this is what they're saying, and we're just lazy and we never write it out, so I will at least once since we're doing the video. It's a function of x and y too. And what is that? y is a constant, x is the variable, I take the derivative of x is 1, so I just get cos y. Plus, again, y is a constant. And the derivative of e is itself. So there's that. But now fx is a function of x and y itself. And that'll be when we take the second derivatives. fy of xy is now what? Now I hold x constant. 
So x is constant, the derivative of cos y is negative sine y, so negative x sine y plus e to the x is a constant, and y's derivative is 1, so plus e to the x. These are the first, partial, first order partial derivatives. Now we want the second ones. There's going to be four of them. Remember, there was actually six calculations here. To find the four second order ones, I still needed the first partial derivatives first. Now we're going to take the derivative of him with respect to x and y, and take the derivative of this one with respect to x and y. But we had to compute those first, remember. Let's do that. F x x in our lazy notation is the derivative of this one with respect to x. That's why I like to list them because it's a whole lot easier. Now I look at it and say take the derivative with respect to it's gone, zero. And this one will be y e to the x again. F x y now lazily says I'm taking the derivative of of this guy with respect to y, which is going to give me negative sine y plus e to the x. Hmm. Now to do f y y first, let's do that one. You'll see why I chose that because they're going to line up underneath each other now. Ooh, drum roll. F y y. I'm going to take the derivative of with respect to y of this function. So again, what do I get? The derivative with respect to y here, I'm going to get what? x is a constant, so negative x times cos y. And this one's zero. Here is why I want to line those up. y x. Now I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x of this guy. And that's going to give me the derivative with respect to x is 1, so I get negative sine y, and then the derivative of e to the x is itself. Notice that these two guys are equal to each other. It turns out fxy is equal to fyx. This is not a mistake. This is the next result, Clairaut's theorem. Let's do that. One more example, one more example. Okay, example two, let's do the second partial derivatives again of a different function, x, ln, y. Again, first, we do need the first derivatives first, the first partial derivatives, and then we'll get the other four. fx is the derivative of x is 1, so we just get log y. Not so bad. And fy is going to be, hold x constant. 1 over y, this is what we're going to get. Now from that we have to create the four other functions fxx, fxy, fyx, fyy. We could make a nursery rhyme, it would be less popular, I'm going to guess. It's probably already out there. It's like, you never heard, I know because no one cares. fxx is the derivative of this with respect to x, which is 0. F x, y is the derivative of this with respect to y, which is 1 over y. And f, y, y, because we have to, is equal to what? The derivative of this with respect to y, which is going to be what? Negative x over y squared. Exponent law, this is x, y to the minus 1. <laughs> yeah, there. And f, y, x is the derivative of this one with respect to x, which is going to give me 1 over y. Oh, they are the same again. I think there may be a result here. This is what we try to see as mathematicians. We start doing a bunch of things. We start seeing a coincidental pattern we may not have had a priori knowledge towards, but we start computing a lot of these, and it looks like these mixed partials are always equal to each other. All right, to finish off this video, basically, we'll just state Clairaut's theorem. Next time, in the next video, we're going to do uh, partial derivatives and higher derivatives of functions of more than two variables. So we'll revisit Clairaut's, and I'll remind you of this, but it happens that if I have a function of two variables, define on a disk D containing some point A, B, and that these mixed partials are actually continuous functions of X and Y. Look at the previous videos about continuity of functions of two variables. 
If that's true, then fxy at ab is equal to fyx at ab. In particular, if that's true for, if it's continuous at all these points in that disk, the mixed partial derivatives are equal to each other. Clairaut's theorem says that it doesn't matter. So when you compute these and it says find all the second order deri partial derivatives of a function of two variables, you're only making three calculations. fxx, fxy, fyy. You don't have to compute fyx because it's the same as the other one. Three computations reduced to two. Please subscribe right here. Hit the notification bell. I'm Adrian, the tutor wizard. I'll see you next time. I don't have it. Mic drop. Mic drop.